the hell are you? Ordinarily, I don't mind seeing a woman get a good beating if she deserves it. Yeah. But this doesn't look like much of a contest to me. You picked the wrong town to stop in, stranger. Nineteen eighty-seven saw the release of Deathstalker Two. This one, directed by Jim Wanitsky and stars John Terleski as Deathstalker. He was one of three actors who who did the role over the course of four movies, and uh, this one is regarded as, in this series as the best. And I hadn't seen the Deathstalker movies uh, since the VHS days until I did the reviews. This is actually the last one I have have, have watched and. You know, having seen it now, I would say yes, this is the best movie out of the Deathstalker series. Um, so much so, it's actually a very different movie to a lot of the rest, which we'll come on to. So the basic plot of this one is Deathstalker is this kind of chancer, he's a rogue. He's basically like a kind of a scoundrel who just goes from one adventure to the next. He's actually a, an admitted thief, so he's morally ambiguous. And he sort of chances upon Evie, played by Monique, Monique Gabrielle who's kind of a bit of a well-known screen queen. She went on to do 976 Evil 2 after this. She was in Evil Dunes. And uh, she basically coerces him to helping her into to winning back her, uh, ki her kingdom, who has been overtaken by uh, John Lazar's Z Jarek the Sorcerer. Uh, and he's got this kind of uh, clone of her. As an, so she plays both roles. And working for him, he's got uh, Tony Naples as Sultana. Yes, really. Um, that's just kind of like this kind of like female general who's really good. I really liked her character, I've got to say. Uh, so off they go to kind of do this kind of quest. And along the way, they meet a variety of kind of like perils and, and, here, and, and heroes as well. They meet a group of Amazon warriors um, led by uh, Maria Sorcus, who has been in a whole bunch of uh, sword and sorcery movies. She was in Wizards of the Lost Kingdom, uh, Warrior and the Sorcerer, I, I believe she was also in. So it's a kind of your rollicking, swashbuckling adventure like you'd, uh, like you'd expect. So what makes this one the best movie? So there's a couple of things here. Uh, and, and the first thing, I think it's probably fairly well documented if you're familiar with this movie. And that is the difference in the tone. So the first movie was very sort of serious. Well, fairly serious. This one was, it, it is so not serious. It's almost a spoof. Good evening, Deathstalker. Doesn't look too good from here. Where's the little princess? You don't expect me to talk. No, no, no. I expect you to die. In actual fact, there's many scenes that are spoofs. Uh, they, there's actually a lot of kind of like pop culture references of movies at the time. James Bond, uh, Rocky to name just two. But there's a whole host of them really. So, you know, you'll be surprised at the kind of the light tone here. And I've got a feeling that... Um, John Tedeschi is a quite a good improviser because a lot of the lines here just seem very off the cuff. And, you know, originally in the script, this was meant to be a serious movie. It wasn't meant to be this kind of jerky film that we ended up having. But I think when shooting started, the director and obviously cast just decided to go in a different direction. I think the movie benefits from that. But that's not the only reason. The other thing I would say is significantly better in this movie than the other ones, and even to a lot of other fantasy movies, is I think the fight choreography here is actually considerably better than anything else in the Deathstalker series. Um, now, I was reading before I did this review, they did a lot of their own stunts, the actors and stuff, uh, John Tedeschi, uh, did the vast majority of his own stunts, as did the other members of the cast. And I've got to say that the, the choreography in the fight scenes here just seem a little bit more natural looking. They're, they're a bit more even uh, flamboyant than, than the other kind of uh, entries in the series, and therefore that much more interesting to kind of watch. Um, this movie has a great sense of fun. It's got lots of kind of like different set pieces. We have a zombie attack. We have the kind of the uh, the traditional pig-headed uh, guards that you sort of see in a lot of the kind of the Deathstalker um, press. They actually have a fairly big role in this one. Uh, so there's, there's there's a whole bunch of fun stuff going on in this movie, and I think John Tuneski is actually one of the better uh, um, kind of like performers really in the Deathstalker. I actually think. In a way, he's, he's more athletic, so he's not the kind of the big Conan sort of style, um, you know, uh, physique that, that Rick Hill had, like, especially the last movie. But, uh, you know, I think he does a good job here. Um, so it doesn't work with this movie. Yeah, I mean, don't be expecting anything too kind of 
uh, you know, sensical really, because it really isn't. Uh, it's, it's obviously, like I've said, it's a kind of a, almost a parody, a spoof of this sort of genre. But there are moments here that it's meant to have uh, elements of kind of drama and stuff, particularly when it comes to the bad guy. One thing that, I mean, it's not really a negative so much, but, and I've said this about another of the Death Talker films as well, the bad guy really doesn't seem that of a bad a person. I mean, he, he just seems like a kind of uh, someone who's overtaken a kingdom. Um, rather than kind of an evil, doesn't you know? We, we never really see him do anything evil. Uh, he doesn't kind of like torture innocent people or anything like that, or you know. And then Deathstalk is kind of like this thief anyway. So you have an, it, the bad guy who really doesn't seem that bad, and the good guy who's fairly morally ambiguous anyway. So it's kind of you know, it's an interesting kind of dynamic here. I mean, this, the movie's not sophisticated enough to do anything with it. Uh, but these, this day and age, it would have been an interesting kind of, like, uh, parallel to have, you know, an anti-hero versus a villain who's really not all that bad when all, all things can considered. I mean, the worst thing he does is kill some of his own guards when he's kind of practicing, but that's really it. Um, I've got to say, though, despite, I think, the, the, the fight scenes are probably some of the best here, some of the sets here are some of the worst. Um... So, the sets in this movie, particularly the first half, look really cheap. Uh, yeah, it's a cheap film, I know, but I've got to say, I think some of the sets in the other films look better. I'm sure some of it's been reused, but it just looks, I don't know, it looks overlit in places, um, and it just looks a little bit sort of too cardboardy and stuff like that, whilst I think it would have benefited from more of a kind of a bit, a bit of lighting. It just seemed a little bit like it, too much it was in a studio and stuff like that at times, uh, with kind of two brighter lights kind of highlighting the fact that it's obviously um, not real stone walls and things like that. Uh, so the sets I don't think were particularly good. The zombie scene was um, a mixed bag. I think I thought the zombies look a little bit too crappy to me. Uh, but there is quite a fun sequence in the mausoleum with a kind of a, a wall with spikes on it that's kind of like, you know, going to come and kind of kill him and all of that. That, that was quite good. Um, yeah, and it just, some of the kind of, Monique Gabrielle's just sort of plucky sort of character called Elian, and I kind of liked her, but she does, I can imagine she would grate on some people's nerves, um, because she ends up being, just, just streaking a lot and kind of being a little bit annoying. I kind of liked it, but I can see it, it, it putting some people off. Yeah, there's no real deepness here, this is not kind of anything, anything that's going to kind of like, uh, you know, make you a massive fan of this genre if you've not a fan already, but... I actually think this is a legitimately fun movie, and uh, certainly one of the best of the kind of the low budget sword and sorcery genre that we've seen in the 80s. And it, I mean, it does use a little bit of the kind of the footage from other movies. I noticed a bit from the original Death Stalker and Amazons in this, uh, but not as not as much as some of the others. Um, I will actually give this movie a, a slightly above average score, you know, based on the kind of the, the movie that it's trying to be. So six out of ten for me. I oh, definitely my favourite uh, of this this series. Um, have you seen it? What did you think? And what's your favourite Deathstalker? Six out of ten for me. Bye for now.